I'm out here in Utah's beautiful Badlands during this week's Adobe Max conference, and there is some pretty big things. I don't normally make post-processing videos when I'm out in the field, but there were some big announcements this year that I want to talk about uh, from Adobe Max. Now, Adobe Max is Adobe's big conference every year where they announce what they've been working on, things that are new and improved, uh, and software updates. And this year, they have let off some huge updates, including some to Lightroom and Lightroom Classic. Now, as a landscape photographer, as I started looking at the updates, I noticed there was a ton of updates to the culling, um, to the performance, you know, stuff that is cool but doesn't really help me a lot as a landscape photographer. That was until I got down to this update here, which is called the Variance Slider. Now, the Variance Slider is really, really nice because it allows you to push colors apart. So if you want to make things uh, different, like you want to make multiple shades of green in one photo, or you can pull them together to make them more similar, which is really nice as well. So a lot of great features with that Variance slider and we're going to be talking about that in today's video. Let's not waste any more time. Let's jump right in there. I'll show you exactly how this variant slider works and how you can use it to get better photos. So when you're in Lightroom here, where you're gonna find this variant slider under the develop tab. Now I've got a few test images here that will make really good test subjects for what this feature does. I'm gonna show you first how it works, what it does, and I'm gonna show you some examples where this might look good. So you're gonna scroll down, you know, you've got your basic tab over here, scroll all the way down under this um, module, the edit module here, till you get to color mixer. Now you're gonna to go to point color to find this and variance right here is gonna be your new feature. So when you hit this eyedropper, um, you can select a color and I'm gonna show you exactly what variance does. So let's select just like a neutral yellow color in here. Somewhere about there looks good. Now, you know, you've got your regular sliders here. These aren't new, your hue, um, your saturation, and then your luminance. Now the variance specifically is a little bit different though because the variance makes more, either pushes colors apart or pulls them together, if that makes sense. So if I drag the variance down, it's going to make more, all the yellows more similar. If I push it away, it's going to make them more different. So for example, I'm gonna drag this variance all the way down and you can see how this, if I delete this before, and this is after it drags all of the yellows together. Now, if you do the opposite and drag it to plus 100, you can see now we've got oranges, greens, yellows, and it really pushes things away and it makes the colors very, very different. So there's a lot of great uses for this. Now, let me show you on a fall color photo since right now it is fall and I'm out here shooting fall color, um, how this can benefit you on a photo like this. You can see this photo, we've got some nice yellows, you know, we've got some deeper oranges here, we've got some greens over here and we maybe just wanna synergize the colors of that tree. So we're gonna hit that eyedropper and we're gonna select a yellow color, maybe right there. And then we are just going to bring the variance slider and I'm not gonna bring it up cause that's gonna make the colors more different. I'm going to bring it down and that is going to make the colors more similar. Now if I toggle this before and after, you can see we really synergize the colors here and we can still go through and make adjustments after the fact to saturation or hue and then we can adjust that variance maybe to make it, you know, if, if you go all the way to minus 100, a lot of times things can look um, not that great because it's all one color. It's nice to have a little bit of variance, but not a lot, you know, somewhere about in there just to fine tune that color to kind of bring those greens towards yellow, bring those oranges towards yellow and kind of just synergize the whole scene. And then you can adjust the hue, saturation or luminance to adjust all the colors at once. Of course, this works in tandem with the range if you wanted to increase or decrease the range, which we may do on this next photo here. This is the other time when um, it really comes into play, especially for landscape photography. This is gonna be helpful. Uh, don't mind my dust spots up here. You can see shooting at F22 to get this sun star, but don't mind that. This is beside the point for this tutorial. I'm gonna do the same thing. Now the problem with this photo, you can see it almost looks like I was using a polarizer. I wasn't, but it almost looks like I was because you can see how deep blue the blues are up here and they're a lighter blue down here. And if I just want to synergize that shade, we can do that with this tool. So grab kind of a neutral blue right in there looks good. And we're going to adjust the variance. Now, if we push it this way, you can see the blues split apart. But if we bring it down, the blues get very similar. Now, you can see this is kind of our first limitation. You do get a little bit of banding here. But again, you can always increase the range or decrease the range to select more or less of the color. And then, of course, you know, you probably don't want to do a full negative 100 or plus 100. You probably want to make a, um, a more subtle adjustment somewhere, you know, right in there. You know, adjust the saturation. You can see before 
and after looking so so much better up there uh, than it was before and of course with these clouds you can still see a little bit of banding there so you do want to be careful but with a cloudless sky this would definitely be a lot easier to do because there's not going to be any banding one thing that you might notice on this photo though is that now our foreground here is also being affected so we can actually delete this swatch and instead we can grab our masking tool and make a sky selection then go down same process within the point color select the color here decrease the variance and you know if you want to do anything else you can do that here as well uh, maybe adjust the hue whatever you want to do and now you can see this is just affecting the sky because we've done it within the masking tool so that's the cool thing you this point color um, which is not new but this variance within the point color is available under the masking tools as well you can see on this photo here kind of the same problem the blue is a little bit deeper and darker on that top left as opposed to there near the middle near the great clouds and i've just fixed that here um, you can see before and after you can fix that super simple and easy just using that variance slider Let's look at one more example because I think one of the most common ways that people might use this tool is to do something that is very popular in landscape photography, especially in forests, where we want to push the greens and yellows either together to kind of harmonize the photo or we want to push them apart to kind of make our photo have a little bit more pop and a little bit more, uh, a little, a few different colors in the scene. So we'll go ahead and grab the eyedropper. And in this photo, I just want to select an average green. It's important you select an average color. You don't want to select like the brightest yellow or the deepest, darkest green. You just want to select something that's kind of average. Uh, maybe about in here is good. And then we can adjust the variance. Now I'm going to just bring the range all the way up to 100. This makes it so that it selects more colors. So more of them are included in this selection. Now if I drag this slider down, you can toggle and see everything in the image is more green. It's pushed all the colors together to harmonize the colors, which might be good in some images. While in other images, you might want to separate them. You can see as I slide it to plus 100 the other direction, now we have a lot more yellows and oranges in here because it's pushed those greens apart and separated them. Now, neither plus 100 nor minus 100 is probably going to be where you want to be but maybe somewhere around 70 might look good. And you can of course always go in and adjust the saturation or luminance after the fact. You can create another point color adjustment if I wanted to maybe fix this little green here. Um, so you can make a ton of different adjustments here to perfectly dial this in for every single photo. You can see just how powerful this little tool is. There's so much you can do with it and it's so, so easy to use that variance slider there. Alrighty guys, that's going to do it for today's video. Hopefully this was helpful for you. Make sure to leave me a like and a subscribe so I can continue to provide you videos that are going to help you to improve your photography. This is obviously a really, really great update for Lightroom and Lightroom Classic users and even Adobe Camera Raw and something that is going to improve as the future goes on. Of course, we're always posting when there's new Lightroom and Lightroom Classic updates. So again, make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you can see all that. Let me know if you want to see more examples down below in the comments and let me know once you try this tool how you like it for yourself. My name is Austin. Austin James Jackson. I want to thank you guys so much for joining me and we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.